Good morning. It is so good to see all of you this morning and all of our guests this morning. We have all the guests from the families of the Confirmands. We want to welcome you all. We have guests from the family of Florence Lewis. We want to welcome you all. It's just such a, such a special morning uh, to be together and to celebrate the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the way that that grace fills our lives. And I tell you, when you gather, and particularly in a day like this, I mean, this is a day the Lord has made and is beautiful uh, in that holiness. And so I want to welcome you uh, in that blessing. And those of you who are joining us at home, it is wonderful to have you with us today for, for such, a, such a special time. As you're here today, I'd ask you to register your attendance there in your bulletin. And there's a tear-out panel that's there. So you, if you uh, sign in on that, um, tear that out. You'll see on the back side of that is a prayer a list and a prayer concerns uh, page. And so as you're here this morning, if there's somebody that you're thinking about, you're praying for, you're lifting up, we'd want to join you uh, in that, particularly during this week. So we invite you to complete that. Uh, again, tear that off, place it in the offering plate, part of the offering of your prayers uh, as you come this morning. You'll see in your bulletin the upcoming events that are, uh, are there before us. Uh, particularly two weeks from now, um, we're going to be having a, uh, oh, I'm just looking for the announcements that's there. It is not, in, oh, yes it is, fifth Sunday, yeah, April, April the 30th, a fifth Sunday celebration. Uh, it's going to be a combined service. So two weeks from now, we'll be meeting down in Common Ground. Those of you who may have been here for the January the 1st, uh, we met January the 1st down in Common Ground. It's just wonderful to all gather there. Uh, that will be Rose, one of Rose Danny's, uh, Pastor Ortiz's uh, last Sundays before her maternity leave. So it's an opportunity for her to lead us in worship uh, in that morning. It'll be very special. Uh, and then from that time, we're going to join together in a, in a potluck, church potluck. Uh, the church is going to provide the entree, the main entree, which is lasagna. Uh, and so as you think about what sides would go well with lasagna, we'd invite you to kind of think about that. Uh, uh, and then bring that on that Sunday, and then we'll join together in a great time of worship. Our souls are fed, great time of uh, fellowship. Uh, our bodies are fed, and so it just brings a great blessing. So I just want to invite you to that special Sunday that's before us. Uh, and again, as we're here with Confirmands, uh, what's going to happen immediately following this service, they're going to be out in the uh, loggia. Uh, and so we're just going to invite you all at that point to come out and to greet them, uh, give them their own personal uh, warm welcome. So uh, with all that being said, again, I want to welcome you. I'm going to invite us to stand as we are able to call to worship. It's going to be before us. It's on our screens. It's in our bulletins. Let it also be in our hearts, our voices, as we unite in our time of praising our Lord this day. Dear friends, we gather as an Easter people. We praise our risen Lord with joy, for Christ has gloriously triumphed. Love and life is over all, so let us live our faith with gladness. We lift our songs and serve our world with joy. In that blessing, let's sing together our opening hymn, Easter People, Raise Your Voices.
us be seated. Even as we have been in praise, let us bow our heads and be in prayer. O oh, good and gracious God, we gather on this day as an Easter people. A beautiful morning, the sun rising, and your holiness abiding as our young people come before us and they would profess you as their Savior and as their Lord. God, we are so grateful for each and every one of our confirmands, for, for Sabrina and Abby and Carter and Nico and for Michael, for how precious they are in your sight, how dear they are to us how they are your children and how you are growing them up as your disciples. And Lord, as we are in these moments, we are thankful for their parents, their families, their friends, all who have surrounded them every step of the way with their love and nurtured in them a faith. And these are moments that they have prayed for and you have answered their prayers even as we find ourselves in this time. Lord, we're also grateful for all of the teachers and the helpers and the pastors and the leaders and in this church and in so many churches who have ministered in nurseries and preschools and Sunday schools and choirs and worship arts camps and, and accoliting and so many special moments and ministries. They have invested their time and their talents and their treasure into the lives of these young people. And now there's the fruit of their labor. Lord, we glorify you that you have been at work in the midst of all, in the midst of all of this, all of the journey and in all of these moments so that our youth are now ready to make this decision, to take this step, to own their faith in ways that even as you have chosen them in Jesus Christ, they choose you now as Savior and Lord. Lord, we pray that this choice, this bedrock foundational choice, will guide all the choices of their lives. Just as they grow and mature, that your, your love would be a foundation upon which they stand, and your truth a light that shines on their path. And we ask and pray that in making this choice, that you, by the power of your spirit, would fill them and protect them and bless them in ways that they would know that you are always with them. That is your promise, Lord, and let that presence, that sense of your presence, always be in their hearts and abide in their souls in ways that even as you would be faithful in covenant, they would live in faithful covenant with you and with your world. Lord, we praise you for the blessing of this morning and for our confirmance as, as they come into this time. And even as we praise you for these good blessings, we lift up other blessings that we have known. We rejoice with the Saverline family, with Julia and Susan and Michael, and the birth of a new baby son, a baby boy, Tucker, uh, born this week. A new life is an amazing gift of your grace, a sacred work of your hand. So we hold up this family in our prayers. And we thank you and praise you for a special birthday as we rejoice in the 90th birthday of Florence Lewis, a matriarch to her family, a blessing to our family, our church family, a gift of your grace to all her family and friends and all who have known her across the years and the witness that she has borne to you of how your love works in our lives. So we're grateful to celebrate her and with, with her family again in this day. And Lord, we pray for those who are ill and infirm. We lift before you those who need your healing mercies. Cheryl Nims and Audrey Masaccio, Alex Huffaker and Leighton and Gail Pettigrew, Brianne Simmer and Steve Escara, and other, others who are on our hearts in this day. And so, Lord, we give you thanks and praise that you would minister to them even as we would intercede for them. And so we pause now, we bring them and we lift them to you ask your blessing upon them in their lives. Gracious God, we thank you that even as we pray, you hear and you answer, you bring to them all they need, for you are their God, 
and they are your children. Lord, we pray always for our nation, for your justice, your righteousness, your peace, your kingdom to lead and guide us. We pray for us as your church, for our witness, for our ministry, for the ways that we would shine your light into the life of your world so that all might know that indeed you are the Savior and the Lord of all. And so gracious God, it's in this faith that we lift up this prayer and all of our prayers. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. The scripture this morning comes from the book of Matthew, the 16th chapter, verses 13 through 19. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others, Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. You know, when we come to special moments such as these, a confirmation Sunday, sometimes we think, well, this is about the confirmands uh, and their families. And in a lot of ways it is. You know, in a lot of ways what's going to happen in the next couple of minutes is they're going to be coming forward, they're going to be professing their faith in Jesus Christ as their Savior and as their Lord. And it, they, there's this joy in our hearts as they take this step. And also at the same time there's this temptation to think, well, these moments are just about what's going on in their lives and not what's going on in, in my life or in your life if you're not the confirmand, or you're not the family of the confirmand. You know, it's, it's kind of about what's going on with them rather than kind of what's going on with me. But, but what happens, what I'd invite you to do this morning as we come into this time and professing, as the confirmands profess their faith, is to use these moments as a moment of witness to us. And, and what I mean by that is as they're up front and as they're professing their faith, I invite you to think about your own profession of faith. To think about the moments in your lives when you maybe stood at that same place or maybe you were in a different spot, but there was a moment in your life where you made a decision, Jesus Christ is my Savior, Jesus Christ is my Lord. And what witness does is it takes us back into those moments in ways that we can, can reflect on those moments and how that decision has guided your life kind of what it has meant to you along the way, what it means to you today, most important, what it means to you tomorrow, <laughs> and what it means to you going forward. Because, you know, what's, what's in the past is past, but what's out ahead is how you and I live into that profession of faith. And so I invite you to kind of experience uh, the moments in the morning uh, in that light and in light of the scripture, because what happens in this particular text is that we see how that bedrock profession comes forward, but more than that, we see how Jesus begins to explain what that profession means in terms of our lives as disciples of Jesus. And so uh, it's in that sense that I'm going to invite us to, uh, to be in these moments this morning and come into the scripture. The heart of the scripture is when Jesus asks his disciples, who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replies, You are the Christ. You are the Son of 
the living God. And so in that faith, what I'm going to invite us to do is to bow our heads, join our hearts, and to be in prayer and to be in the Word this morning. Gracious God, we give you thanks for how we come into these moments and how your scripture shines a light on what these moments mean for us as people of faith and what these moments mean for our confirmance, young people of faith, a whole life before them. And Lord God, we pray that your love would be within them in ways that that light of your love might shine in their path, might shape their lives, might be their strength, might be their hope, might bring them into your peace, might bring them into your service in ways that they might live into the purposes that you have created for each of them beautifully and individually, uniquely as witnesses for you. So, Lord God, in that blessing, we give you our thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For the last nine months, our confirmands have uh, joined together every Tuesday afternoon. And we have been downstairs uh, in the basement of the church where the youth room is. And some say, sometimes you say, down in the basement. Well, it's, really, it's a really cool basement to go down. I just want to tell you, it is, it is a very a special place to be. And we've sat in these sofas uh, uh, in a circle. And, and we've shared together, uh, you know, we've eaten cook. I eat the cookies. I, I eat, uh, y'all eat cookies sometimes. Drink, so yeah, cookies and chips and uh, sodas. And, you know, we kind of relax, talk about the week a little bit. And then we begin to go into our and then begin to explore about Jesus and who Jesus is and, and what that, who Jesus is for our lives. And so we've kind of spent nine months uh, looking at all of that. And, and at the very, our very, very first lesson uh, when we start out is a lesson that's called Decisions, Decisions, Decisions. I can guarantee you the confirmands if they... Remember nothing else from all of this. I'll remember decisions, 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 because we have come back to that point over and over again. And what we've tried to stress is that life is full of decisions. That growing up, it's all about decisions. Each day confronts us with decisions. That's what makes up life. Decisions, uh, they are everywhere. And, and what we all learn pretty quickly and what our confirmands have already learned or they haven't, they pretty soon will learn, is that some decisions are more important than others. I, I mean, there are some decisions you can come along and you can say, well, I don't care, it doesn't really matter, okay, so I'm going to blow this one off, and, and that's okay. I mean, there's some things that are that's just like that. That's the way the decision is. But yet there are other decisions that really matter. (laughs) There are other decisions that really matter because there are decisions that we make in our lives that determine the directions of our lives. There are decisions that we make in our lives that set us on a path, that shape our walk, that guide us into a future. And today, We focus in on a decision that's like that. Now, it's the responsibility of our families and parents, of teachers, of our youth leaders, of all the people who have intersected the life of their kids along the way. It's our responsibility to teach them to know the difference, to know the difference between a little decision and a big decision, a major decision, a minor and a major, you know, so they can get a sense of how this one matters, this one doesn't matter, and also how to make smart and wise decisions because we want them to make decisions that help them and don't hurt them, that bless them and don't burden them. And so it's our responsibility to help them to learn how to make that kind of choice, to make those kind of decisions. Because we know that there will come a time when they get older that we won't be around to help them make the decisions. (laughs) There'll come a time in their lives, and confirmands that time is really soon, it's closer than you might think, (laughs) where they'll make decisions 
for themselves. They'll make the choices for their own lives. And that's what gives decisions power. When you make a choice for you, when you make a decision for you, that's what gives a decision power because what you're doing in those moments is you are exercising control over your life. You are taking responsibility for your life. You are setting the direction of your life and so decisions determine your life. Your decisions determine your life. Now, lots of people make lots of decisions about lots of things, but what we've covered in the last nine months is that there is no decision that is more critical than the response and the decision we make to God's decision for us in Jesus. Because what has happened in Jesus is that God so loves all of the world, and all of us, that God sends his son. God gives his son. That's God's decision. That's God's choice. To come and embrace all of our lives with the love of God as it comes to us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's God's choice. And what happens when God makes that choice? That choice becomes an invitation to us. It kind of puts us in a place where we have a response to make to that. See, God has initiated, but the initiation is always an invitation. And so when God steps out like that in Christ, what happens is it puts us in this place of saying, okay, what, what are we going to do in response? What, what choice, what decision are we going to make in terms of how we will relate to that love of God in Christ? We've talked about that in Confirmation. We've talked about how that faithfulness of God, that love of God that reaches out to us in Jesus Christ, how when we love back, how it forms a relationship that we call covenant, where there's an unconditional love of God that embraces us, and we embrace God back with our faithful response to Jesus Christ. And so what happens, God reaches out, and we have a choice to make choice to make when it comes to Jesus. And that's where the scripture kind of comes down, the choice we make when it comes to Jesus. Uh, uh, Jesus is out with his disciples, they're traveling around uh, up in the, um, in the Galilee where Jesus did a lot of his ministry, a lot of his preaching, a lot of his teaching, a lot of his healing. So he's up there and he asks the disciples, he says, well, who do the people say that I am? You know, kind of taking a poll. What are, they, what are they saying out there on the street? They've seen all that I'm doing. I mean, what's, what's being said out there? And, and the disciples say, well, some people think that you are Elijah, and some people think uh, that you are John the Baptist, and some people think that you are Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. You know, you're one in a long line of holy men that has come that is gone. <laughs> you know, you're just one, you're just one in, the, in the string, you know? What do the people say? about who I am. Lots of different thoughts, lots of different decisions. It was that way in Jesus' day. It's that way in our day, too. I, I want to tell you, when you talk, about, you talk to people about, well, who is Jesus, what you begin to find is some people say, well, he is the Christ, the Son of the living God. There are other people who say, well, he's the founder of a great religion. There are some people who will say he's a wise teacher. There are some people who will say, well, like, who is Jesus? <laughs> I don't know. There are some people who will say, I don't care. You know, there are some people who even anti-Jesus. I mean, you get this spectrum of answers, you know, I mean, about people, you know, what people think about Jesus. And that's the way it was back in Jesus' day. That's the way it is in our day. And that's fine because, you know what, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what everybody else thinks. It matters what you think. It matters what you think. So Jesus asked the disciples this question. Who do you say I am? What do you think? Who do you say that I am? What's your answer? When you look in your heart, when you begin to think about your life, 
you begin to probe deep within your own soul about how you respond to that question. Who do you say that Jesus is? Because what you say, your answer, it really matters. It really matters. Now what the scripture does is kind of leaves us and it brings us into that place. And it moves out of that place because from that place, uh, Peter... Simon Peter, one of the followers, kind of steps into that space and into those moments, and he brings forward an answer that's kind of the, the model for, for all of us to say, hey, I, to that invitation, we can make this response. And Simon Peter says, you know, you are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. You are the one and only of God. You are the one who God has sent to build the bridge between the world and heaven in a way that we might know that fullness of the love of God that would embrace our lives and embrace our world and be our salvation. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. And so Peter brings forward that answer. Kind of gives us a model that we can step into and say, you know what? I can have that same answer. And that's what our compromands come to do this morning. They come to make that same answer as they profess Jesus Christ as their Savior and as their Lord. And as we make our answer, we can make that same profession in our hearts that Jesus is our Savior and our Lord because it's that profession that begins to shape our lives as we move forward. As we move forward in what's out ahead for you and for me. And so Peter brings forward... That answer. And then Jesus used that, uses it as a platform to preach. And so I'm going to make a couple of few more points that Jesus makes in the, in the uh, gospel this morning. And then we'll move into the confirmation. But here are the points that Jesus makes off of this profession. First of all, it's a gift. It's a gift of God's grace. It's not something you just read in a book. It's not something you just thought of by yourself. It's not something that, hey, I came up with that, and that's a good thing to think about. That's, that's not the way this is. Jesus says, you know what? Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but the Father in heaven has revealed this to you. I mean, it is about what you think, but you need to know that when you say Jesus Christ is my Savior and my Lord, it is a gift of God to you and to me, and it's to be treated as a gift, to be cherished to be treasured, to be embraced, to be lived out in that way as it's so, so special. Flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you. If you come to that conclusion, it's the Holy Spirit in your heart that has brought you to that place. It's God at work in your life that has helped you make that choice. And so he says, you know what, first of all, it's a gift. Second of all, as you begin to follow Jesus in the light of that gift, you not only find out about who Jesus is, you find out about who you are. Because I want to tell you, friends, when you begin to look at your life in the light of the love of God and Jesus Christ, you begin to see things in yourself that you never saw in yourself before. You know, we talk about authentic identity and who we really are. Well, who we really are and our authentic identity is who we really are in Christ, who we really are in the love of God, what God would make possible in and through your life. That, that's who we really are. And so Jesus comes and says to Simon, he says to Simon, hey, Simon, Simon, son of Jonah, you are the rock. You're Peter. You are the rock. I, I want to tell you how ironic that is because Peter, if you look through the scripture, is known as being impetuous, rash, spontaneous, doing things that are just kind of off the wall. I mean, it's when he, he's the one that when they're out there sailing in the middle of the sea, they see Jesus kind of walking across the water. Uh, Peter's the one who decides to get out of the boat, promptly sinks. You know, I mean, that, that's Peter. He just kind of acts like that. He's the one where Jesus is going to wash my feet. Oh, not my feet. And he says, well, if you don't have washed my feet, you have no part of me. Oh, wash all of me. You know, I mean, that, that's just Peter. He, he's He's a guy that just kind of just reacts right in the moment. And so Jesus looks at, at, at Simon and he says, you know what? I see in you strength and steadiness and firmness. All these things that Peter would never have seen in himself. But Jesus sees those in him. And sometimes I think about what Jesus sees in me when Jesus looks at my life in that love of God. 
And I invite you to think about what Jesus sees in your life. That Jesus looks at you with the love of God. That he sees in you that you don't see in yourself that brings forward the blessing in your life that God has created you to be, Peter. The gift you are. I don't know what name God would give you, but there is a name and a blessing that you bring. And then Jesus says, on this rock, on this confession, on this profession, Jesus Christ is the Son of God and is the Savior. On that rock, I will build my church. You know, sometimes we think of church as bricks and mortar. Sometimes we think of church as organization and institution. Sometimes we think of church in, in all kinds of ways that are not, I think, at the core of what the church really is because at the core of what the church really is, Jesus Christ is Savior and Lord. That profession is the bedrock. It's the foundation. It's the heart of who we are, and we are a community of people who make that profession, and it links our lives together in ways that we live out that profession in the life of the world, so we show the world what the love of God really means within the life of the world, and that's what it means to be the church. Where people look at the church, and what they see is, that's what the kingdom looks like, because of how the church lives its life in that profession. He's the Christ, the Son of the living God. And so Jesus says, you know, I'll build my church. And what I love about that phrase is sometimes we think it's our responsibility <laughs> to take care of the church, you know. That's not what the text says. The text says, Jesus says, I'll build it. You come alongside me. We'll work together, but I'll take care of this, you know. We participate in what God is doing in the life of the world as we live together in the name of Christ in the life of the church. On this rock, Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. I will build my church, and hell won't stand against it. You know, sometimes we look out there and think, hey, man, what difference does it make that we're living out the love of God and Jesus Christ in the life of the world because it looks like everything's going to hell in a handbasket. And what Jesus says is, you know what? We look out there, we see all the opposition. Guess what? God's in control, God's working. God will use us as the church. God will work through us. Keep the faith. Keep on moving forward. Because God is going to use the church. Anyone who's trying to live out the love of God in Christ, God will work through and in them to make a difference in the life of the world. I'll build the church on that bedrock, and, and hell won't stand up against it. And so the last thing Jesus says to Peter, to the disciples... Because I'm going to give you the keys. I'm going to give you the keys. Your choice, it's the key. And what your choice does to profess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it unlocks, it unlocks heaven in the life of the world today. That's what it does. I'll give you the keys of heaven. And what you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. See, when we make a link in terms of the love of God and Jesus Christ, not only in our own hearts, but with the lives of others, when we make that link, when we come into that place of, of coming together and binding together, what Jesus says is that has eternal consequence. We bind together in ways that people are bound in the love of God to the Lord who is above, to the Father who is above. What we bind on earth is bound in heaven. What we loose on earth, what we let loose on earth, in terms of love and hope and peace and joy, what we loose on earth, man, we're letting heaven loose on earth. That's what it means to be the church. And so, friends, what happens in this day, we come and we gather as the church we gather as people of faith. We gather as people who li whose lives are linked by a profession. A profession that Jesus Christ is our Savior and is our Lord. It's what makes us who we are <laughs> and what leads us forward into all we share together. And so it's in that joy that I'm going that we now, as a, as a church family, will share with our confirmands in our time of confirmation and so I'm going to invite and present to you this morning uh, for our time together uh, Sabrina Eve Bellamy 
Abigail Morgan Love. No, come on forward. Carter Anthony Rogers. Nico Blue Ross Murphy. And Michael Raymond Siepenhausen. Confirmance, will you turn and face me, please? Let me ask you these questions. On behalf of the whole church, I would ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Your answer is, I do. Amen. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they may present themselves? Your answer is, I do. Amen. Do you profess Jesus Christ as your Savior and as your Lord? Put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him, serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages and nations and races, and your answer is, I do. Amen. According to the grace that God has given to you, will you remain a faithful minister, a faithful witness in Christ's holy church, and serve as Christ's representative, a minister of God's love in the life of the world? And your answer is, I will. Amen. Parents and sponsors, all those who have come uh, for these candidates, will you support them? Will you encourage them? Will you stand behind them every step of the way as they move forward in this journey of their Christian life? And your answer is, we will. Amen. And church family, do you as the body of Christ, the church, Reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ, and your answer is, we do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these confirmands who are now before you in your care? Our answer is before us on the screen. You bring it up. Here we go. With God's help, we'll proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these youth with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples of Jesus Christ who walk in his ways that lead to eternal life. Amen. And now let us join together in professing our faith as the church as we unite in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitted at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I'm going to invite the families of the confirmands if they will come forward at this time and stand behind their confirmand.
I want to tell you, friends, this just blesses my heart <laughs> to see you all here. I hope it blesses all of our hearts. Uh, Confirmands, I just want you to look at those folks who are standing behind you because they love you and they pray for you. And they are the folks who you can always kind of lean into and lean upon and rely upon. Uh, they, they are, they're your people, <laughs> you know. And uh, it's so good to have you all with us uh, in these sacred moments. Let's pray together. O eternal and gracious God, when nothing existed except chaos, you were there. You were there in the beginning. You swept across the dark waters and you brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through the flood, through the water, and then you set in the clouds a rainbow, the sign of your promise. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, your heart went to them. You sent Moses, you led them to freedom through the sea, and their children you brought through the Jordan to the land that you've promised. And so, Lord God, we stand in these moments in light of that promise and your continual leading forward. And in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus. Jesus, nurtured in the water of the womb of Mary, baptized by John, anointed by your spirit. Jesus, who called his disciples to share in his baptism, the baptism of his suffering and death and, re and resurrection, so that with his disciples... He might build his church in all of the nations. And so, Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit and all of us who are gathered here in these moments. Pour out your Spirit on the gift of the water of the baptism. Pour out your Spirit upon the confirmation as we come together and as we kneel and as we lay on hands. Pour out your Spirit in ways that we'd be washed clean of our sin, that we'd be clothed in your righteousness, that we might be raised with Christ and share in his final victory always. The very Lord and Savior who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I'm just going to invite you to lay a hand on the person in front of you. <laughs> and you lay a hand on the person in front of them. And, uh, oh, gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit on Sabrina, Eve, Bellamy. Pour out your Spirit in ways that she may be a faithful disciple of yours all the days of her life. Confirm and strengthen in her that profession that you are Savior and that you are Lord. And by your Spirit, let her live as a disciple of yours in that love, a witness to your world, to all of the goodness of your grace and glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray.
Abigail Morgan Love, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And may God so fill you with his Holy Spirit that he would confirm and strengthen you as a true disciple all the days of your life. May you always walk in the grace of God in ways that your life might shine with that glory, in ways that you might share that love, that blessing with everyone so that Christ as Savior and Lord comes alive in you and through you all to the glory of God this day and always. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Carter Anthony Rogers, may the Lord pour out his Holy Spirit upon you. May the Lord strengthen you in his grace. May the Lord bless you in the fullness of his love. May the Lord establish the profession that he is your Savior and he is your Lord in your heart in ways that you would live out that gift of grace each and every day. Gracious God, bless this servant of yours, this child of yours, this disciple of yours in ways that his life may be a witness for you to your love and to your kingdom, to his blessing, to your glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Holy God, pour out your spirit on Nico Blue Ross Murphy. Fill her heart with your love, her soul with your grace. Let her know the power of the profession that you are her savior, that you are her Lord. Let that come alive in her life in ways that she shares that beauty of your holiness the beauty of your love and life with all of those in which she lives and your world as she shares your love. Lord, we ask that you keep her in that spirit, in that grace, defend her in every day and guide her and lead her in ways that her light would shine. Your light shine through her and her light shine in you. And as she brings that blessing, Lord, let it be to your glory and let it be to, to her blessing in and through Jesus Christ our Lord in whose name we pray Amen okay, The steps are tricky
Michael, Raymond, Siebenhausen, I baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And may God so pour out the Holy Spirit upon you this day and always in ways that you might always live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. May that profession that he is your Savior and he is your Lord be a guiding light for you every step of the way in ways that your life would share and show that blessing of his love. And may God strengthen you for that gift, the gift that you are, that you give to the life of the world. Gracious God, we pray that as you pour out your spirit, as Michael lives in that spirit, that he would shine and show your glory, that you would be glorified, that he would be blessed, that it would all be in the name of Christ, our Savior and our Lord. In his name we pray. One more question to ask our confirmands, and then one more um, invitation to all of us. Confirmands, as members of Christ's universal church, and you became part of that body of Christ as you professed your faith in Christ, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church, put that faith to practice in the United Methodist Church, and do all in your power to strengthen and uphold its ministries with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, your witness? Your answer is, we will. Amen. The members of the household of faith, I commend to your love and care these persons who now are before us. Do all in your power to increase them in their faith, to confirm them in their hope, to perfect them in the love of Christ. Let us join together in our response. As it comes before, we give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members, to, as members together with you in the body of Christ. We renew our covenant to faithfully participate in the ministries of the church with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You turn and face the congregation, your congregation, and let us give. Why don't you all come together real quick? Doug's asking me to bring you all in together real fast. You all kind of come in the middle. Carter, slide down. Sabrina, come on. You all come in. Come in, come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. Good. All right. Photo, this is a photo op. <laughs> you all can give them a big, give them a, give them a praise God. All right, very good. Amen. Y'all may be seated. <laughs> oh, what a blessing. We invite the ushers to come forward now as we uh, not only celebrate the gifts that God gives us in Jesus Christ, but we give our gifts as Christ church in ways that we forward the ministry of our Lord and Savior. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, for the ways that we have been blessed this morning and for the ways that we give our gifts so that the blessings might flow from this place. We give you our thanks and praise. We ask that you use the gifts and guide them so that they might do your work in the world to your glory. In Jesus we pray. Amen. As our next generation comes up to get ready, I want to speak a little bit to the words of our uh, two selections today. Wade in the Water uh, comes from an American spiritual that often has two different meanings. Wade in the Water, Wade in the Water, God's going to trouble the water. And trouble doesn't mean that there's trouble in the water. Trouble means that God is moving. And we have seen that today, that God through these baptismal waters is moving today and will continue to move throughout the lives of these compromands today. So I want you to think about it in that context. And then our second piece, Ubi Caritas, a beautiful piece written by my dear friend Victor Johnson using an ancient Latin text. 
ubi caritas Deus ibi est. Where there is charity and love, God is there. The love of Christ has gathered us together. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And from a sincere heart, let us love one another.
our final hymn for this morning. We are marching uh, in the light of God. And so we're going to be singing just one verse uh, of this particular hymn. It's been a blessing this morning to be with our confirmands in this most awesome step that you have made in your Christian faith. And we go from this time and this place and we step out into the world. We march as people of faith out into the world to bring God's grace to everyone you meet. So let us go from this time and this place and live the love of Jesus Christ. Live it bold and live it bright and live it beautifully with everyone with everyone as you go from these moments and live. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.